Check the forty show. We are back. Welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Forty Podcast. I am John DeBar with my co-host, Mr. Matt Walker. Today we are looking at uh, kind of looking ahead to the NFL playoffs round two. Uh, how that plays out for the fantasy playoff leagues that we kind of discussed last week, who's left, what kind of matchups we like going forward. And take to start, though, we're going to take a quick look at the teams that were eliminated from the NFL playoffs and kind of what's next for them and how that impacts us for fantasy walk. That was kind of your idea. So whatever you want to start off team-wise, let's go there. Yeah, well, listen, we had three Saturday, three Sunday, so we'll just run through how they were laid out for us over the weekend because while there was a uh, – every team, every game went over 50 on Saturday, it, it took us till late Sunday night to, to have an interesting contest where I, I coined the term Sunder Day. That's a, that's a new thing. No one else can have it. It's mine. It's on Twitter. It's got a timestamp on it. So, you know, that trademark will be coming shortly until the Cleveland Browns decided to – you know, put an end to that. But first game to kick off the weekend, wild weekend, was the Indianapolis Colts leaving, losing a close one, 24-27 to the Buffalo Bills. So my question to you is, with those Indianapolis Colts, is, do they bring Phil Rivers back? Should they bring Phil Rivers back? If they don't, what do they do? And how awesome is Jonathan Taylor going to be next year? So... Uh, I think it's up to Rivers. I think if Rivers decides he's not going to retire, they will happily bring him back. Um, so I, I think it's in his court. If he, and since they made the playoffs and I, I, he had a decent enough year, I wouldn't be shocked if he decided to come back for one more year. The the interesting idea I saw somebody on Twitter was, why don't they just say blow it up and go for everything next year? Give Houston the three firsts, bring in um, Deshaun sure. Watson in the trade. And uh, I can't remember who else they had going to them. But there's a, a couple of decent free agents that will be out there. And the, the Colts have some cap room. So we're saying bring in Watson, bring in Allen Robinson. And uh, well, there was another decent priced wide receiver, I think, that will be on the market this year. Juju, I think. Yeah, so, I mean, cool. if they, yeah, if they want to – they have the cap room too. So if they want to really – fucking go for it and blow this up. They they have a chance. I don't think they do that. I think Rivers decides to come back and they get kicked out of the playoffs first round next year. As far as Jonathan Taylor, he as keep in mind how his trajectory kind of went all year. A lot of people had him as the running back one in this class and he came out of the gate flat and people were like, oh, this guy's Trent Richardson. And then he had a good second half of the year and everybody jumped back on board. So we saw enough down weeks during the season that there's a chance he isn't as good as he was to close the year. A lot like not comparing skill sets, but kind of like David Montgomery as as the year closed out, he had good matchups and and did a lot more with it. So although I think Taylor's obviously better than David Montgomery, I I, kind of a mixed bag in year one and and recency bias. People are going to think he's a lot better than I think he was this year. All right. Well, we'll start from the the last thing you said and work back to the first thing you said. How dare you even mention David Montgomery's name in the same conversation as Jonathan Taylor? Twitter was just like besieged with comparing the two of them late in the season because they both had like the dream playoff, you know, matchups and fantasy playoff matchups and and what came of it. But, um, yeah, I think – Brighter days are ahead for Jonathan Taylor. You know, there will be absolutely no Jordan Wilkins there next year. He seems to have gained the trust of that coaching staff. I'm excited to see what he does. And at the end of the season, Naheem Hines was an afterthought. He was getting like five touches. Without going game to game, though, wasn't that a a lot of that game flow dependent? Like we said that early in the year, like if they end up trailing, we're going to see more Hines. And I, and I, to the best of my recollection, even down the stretch, a few games where they did get behind Hines did get a little more work. I mean, he's obviously going to be more active in games that they're losing. But listen, they were behind this in, well, not this entire game. It was a weird start to the game, but they were behind for a good chunk of the game. And we still saw 21 Jonathan Taylor carries 
And as far as receptions were concerned, three targets for Naheem Hines, four targets for Jonathan Taylor. Neither of them did anything in a receiving game. Naheem Hines did have a few long runs where he ended up putting almost as many rushing yards up on yeah. six carries. But, um, you know, I I just think that Jonathan Taylor is probably a, as much of a lock for 20 touches a game as almost any other running back in the NFL next year. So I'm exceedingly optimistic. I think he's going to be high-end RB1 next season because he showed me he can catch the ball, especially if Rivers is there because we've talked about Rivers at length and how he likes targeting the running back, yeah. and he did not disappoint this year. So if Rivers comes back, book it. Top six running back season for Jonathan Taylor. Now the Rivers thing, I think Rivers works well in this offense because he doesn't have to do too much. They want to be a run-first offense. It is a tremendous offensive line. Ballard deserves a ton of credit for the team that he's built, and to your point with limited cap contributions. But they need to do some work on that defense. While I think they had good numbers statistically, I don't think they're that good of a defense. I mean, they have Darius Leonard and DeForest Buckner and then a bunch of role players uh, on that defense. They need to get better. They need to get a pass rush, for Christ's sake, at the end of the day, that if they want to dominate. And I don't see a world where the Texans trade Deshaun Watson in division, even though two of the best landing spots for Deshaun Watson are probably the Indianapolis Colts or the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> if, like it, if they wanted to swing for those fences, like you give up the 101 for Deshaun Watson, I might be – that might be enticed to do so. You know, the the devil you know over a generational talent like Trevor Lawrence. But it's going to be interesting to see where they go. But if we're running through all six of these games, may have to be a little tighter after this. So let's talk about your shitty Seattle Seahawks. Now they <laughs> totally pooped a bed against the L.A. Rams and a concussed, I guess it was, John Wofford and a two weeks with a from thumb surgery, Jared Goff. I mean – John, where do we go from here? Russell Wilson's play cratered after that early season let Russ Cook fiasco and almost proved <laughs> the Pete Carroll you know, accolades right that this should be a run first team. Well, they, I mean, I watch them more than other teams, so I have a different opinion probably, but they no, very few teams play to the level of their competition like this. In, in the beginning of the year when their defense sucked and they gave up the points, they had no problem, you know, with the, the let Russ cook madness. They had no problem hanging in those games, putting up points when they needed to score. And then when they get in these shitty, muddy, you know, running 16, 13 games, they play down to that level too, you know, so – I don't even have the right words for it. Like they need to just change the way they do it. Put your foot on the gas and keep going. Cause they showed that they were able to do it when they had to. So why in these games, when they don't have to, they kind of hey, we'll, we'll run a little bit here. No need to do this. And you know what I mean? So the, the talent is obviously there because we see them do it when they have to do it. So why, why they, I think Schottenheim is just a horrific OC, but that's, that's correct, and they seem to be incapable of doing it against the L.A. Rams. I mean, we we talked about it before the games last week. We, I think, even went back the last two years, and it's just the Rams just have the Seahawks number uh, as far as how to defend this team because it's pretty straightforward. I mean, if you can minimize Lockett and Metcalf, they don't have a third guy that's going to make you pay. David Moore is not going to make you pay. I mean, he might catch one catch here or there. Freddie Swaim is not going to make you pay. None of those tight ends are going to make you pay. Those running backs aren't going to make you pay. And getting pressure, Russ was sacked five times for 32 yards. So on top of it, you know, threw a pick, couldn't even get to 200 passing yards. I mean, just – just an ugly day with five of 11 to Metcalf, only four targets to, to Tyler Lockett the whole game, four targets, a target a quarter. Is that, that's, that's how you win playoff football. I mean, it's atrocious, but not much on that side. And they need to stop patchworking that defense. Like they, they need to, I don't want to say blow it up, but you know, trading for Dunlap. Like let's keep, let's keep trying to find ways to rush the passer because we don't have we're not good at developing pass rushers. You know, we're going to draft all these D linemen. None of them can can rush the passer. So we're just going to hold on with our linebacker core and you know our above average secondary. I mean, Jamal Adams being added sure helps, but you know, I just don't think they're they're not as they're not a twelve and fourteen to me. I mean, we can talk about the Steelers too later about you just looking at them at the end of the day. And you're like, how'd they get to twelve and four? 
Like, and I don't think they're that good of a team, especially in a division that I think is pretty competitive. The Cardinals are decent. The Rams are obviously good. And the 49ers were just besieged by injury. I, I think a single-digit win season is on the horizon for the Seahawks if they don't fix shit quick. I I can't disagree with anything. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's put a little sunshine on this matchup. How awesome is Cam Akers? But that was oddly enough. This was the one game throughout the weekend that I actually missed most of it. I was, was napping, uh, but I saw. I woke up enough to see a few runs here and was checking the box where on my phone to see how many yards he had tallied. But I was, you know, that, that's something I don't think we talked about at all last week. But in hindsight, you look at this and you go, "Well, of course they had this other backup quarterback playing." Who's what are they going to do? They had to lean on the running game. So, yeah, in hindsight, that was actually a pretty easy one. I think a lot of people whiffed on. I mean, looking back, I don't have it, obviously, across every league, but one of the bigger playoff uh, leagues I'm in, uh, they think there's close to 200 teams, I think, something like that. But Akers was only owned by 2% of teams in that league. Really? So people really overlooked it. And and like I said, it, it, hindsight's obviously much easier to make these picks. But fuck, what what else were they going to do? They weren't going to turn the game over to Walford. Yeah, true. I mean, I, I was scared of all their pass catchers. I went with the Rams defense in, in my home playoff league, which which paid off because they scored a defensive yeah. touchdown on a bunch of sacks. But I was protecting against the Seattle win on that one where I wouldn't have been too unhappy to lose a defense. But, yeah, it would have been nice to have an Akers instead of, you know, like a shit Derrick Henry at the end of the day. But like you said, we can't go back. We only go forward. So let's go to Saturday night. And what probably was one of the most interesting games uh, of the weekend to me was Alex Smith was ruled out. So Taylor Heineke got the start for those Washington football team hosting Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where – I don't know how he did it, but Ronald Jones found a way to hurt himself before ever logging a snap. So our boy, Leonard Fournette, put up 93 and a touchdown rushing and then also just chipped in another four for 39 receiving. Just a just a old school Leonard Fournette thumbing the nose at everyone day. But the first thing I want to ask, did you watch this game at all? Yeah. Did you see the Leonard Fournette touchdown? No, I missed it. I went to the bathroom and came back and I was curious go, how they'd score go find it because Leonard Fournette breaks out the gritty after he scores because obviously it's an LSU thing and watch all of the offensive skill position players just peel off and leave him there to celebrate by himself the offensive line hangs around but Godwin Gronk if someone else literally just turn and walk away like they look like they were about to go celebrate with him and then he he, he breaks out the day they, they literally all just walk away from him so I'm pretty sure at this point that everyone hates Leonard Fournette like just universally loathed by all, and I, I really want to know why. But talking about Washington, Alex Smith clearly isn't the answer. It was a great story. Good for Washington for being competitive. Great defense. I, I think brighter days are ahead. They have some skill position players that you and I like. You're a Terry McLaurin truther to the core. We're both all over Antonio Gibson, who unfortunately you could tell he was still bothered by that ankle injury in the game. He was not running well, but – they have some pieces on this team. They need a quarterback. What do they do? Logan Thomas is good. I like Cam, like Cam Sims. Yeah, they, I, I like what they have. <laughs> they just need a quarterback. I don't know. I mean, they're not going to draft early enough to get anybody, any of the top guys. I don't see them trading up. Doesn't Ron Rivera seem like a, we're going to go into next year with this defense and Kyle Allen or this Heineke kid? It's not a, it's not shocking. It wouldn't be. And listen, Heineke was fun. Yeah. The dude was running around. He was reckless. Yeah. Yeah. AC joint sprain on his touchdown, came back in, finished the game. Those are the guys that I like to root for. I heard rumblings that why not Cam Newton reunited with Riverboat Ron? Who's like, listen, I got a playoff team right now. Yeah. Like, Give Cam a one or two year deal. Like he didn't earn anything more from what he did in New England. He's not he's not gonna get rich. You know, I th- think there could be a world. I mean, does Jameis Winston resign with Norman? You, br- I didn't even think of Cam. That's a good one. But you bring him in. You know, don't guarantee shit. Have him compete with these couple young nobodies. And if he doesn't, if he looks like shit, you just cut him. Who cares? Yeah, give him an incentive laden deal. You make the team, 
know, you hit all yeah. these benchmarks. I just think they just need to get a lot better. I mean, because Alex Smith, God bless heart, great story again. The dude just needs to just walk away. Like, he strains a calf that doesn't even have the same amount of muscles in it that you and I have at, at present. And that's just a calf muscle. I mean, God, God forbid it didn't explode on him, you know, in the field. And then he's going through countless other surgeries. Like, just, dude, you, you ended it on your own terms. You got back on the field, you took a team to the playoffs. Kudos to you. Give him the comeback player to your award and force him to retire. You threw out two names I didn't think. I, I, I totally forgot about Cam because he's forgettable. But Winston, yeah, he, he's going to be wandering around there. There's no way the Saints bring him back unless Breeze retires for sure. And then maybe – but they don't seem to have any confidence in him because when Breeze was out, why wouldn't you kick the tires on him instead of – trotting out that pile of garbage tight end that they think is a quarterback. But, you know, Winston has his shortcomings. But, yeah, why not throw him with Riverboat Ron and let him start firing YOLO balls to McLaurin and to – to it'd be good for offense. They'd turn it over a ton. But for fantasy, who gives a shit? Which is probably why Ron Rivera would want nothing to do with James yeah. Winston as he does not strike me as that type of individual. Right? There's not many coaches that want James Winston as their star quarterback, obviously. I, I want to see – we haven't seen him since he got his LASIK surgery. And I honestly – if you just Google image search James Winston squinting, you will see – It's all over the place. Yeah. Pages. Pages of it. I honestly think – his eyesight was dog shit. And I think he's good. I think when he comes back, he's good. Yeah, I honestly think he was hung over most of the time. You know, it's like when you walk out, you, know, you, you walk out and that sun is 10 times brighter the next morning than it was the day before. And you can't find glasses for the life of you. Like you, you're, you're left with the, the old hand over the eyes or you're just squinting your way home. I mean, that's, that's how I see Jameis Winston. Another name could be Mitch Trubisky. I believe it's a free agent because they didn't pick up the option, if I'm not mistaken. But we're going to have to get on to those Bears. But there's going to be options out there. And it's a deep enough draft that I think some of these guys will be later first-round picks. Like a Mac Jones, he's not getting a ton of buzz. The dude's going to be playing the championship game tonight. I don't see anywhere mocking him in the top half of the first round. Like, who knows? Maybe they end up drafting their guy of the future in the late first. Or they you know trade up to get him. You've presented a lot of interesting options that I didn't think of. Yeah. All right. Now talking about those Chicago Bears, your your old team, and kudos to you for getting out from under this because talk about a team that didn't deserve to be in the playoffs. Washington. Well, watching watching uh, week one of the uh, you know playoff weekend, I didn't do much better. It was a tough, it was a tough weekend for you. Yeah, <laughs> the Bears sucked. They made little attempt to be competitive in this game. And I think the Saints knew from opening kickoff that they had won the game. Like they're just we're we're not gonna hammer you. We're just gonna we're just gonna keep not making mistakes and we'll inevitably win this game. That's all we need to do. I mean, I don't know how they didn't score at the end, but I looked at it for a second on my phone because I wasn't actually watching this one. They had first and goal at the one, the Saints somehow yeah. did not score at all. And that's when the Bears went back down and and got the the bum Jimmy Graham touchdown, where Jimmy Graham literally ran right into the locker room. After he scored it, like he just, you know, he should have dunked it. I mean, come on, let's be honest. Like that's how you, Jimmy, next time, like, unless you can anymore, give me your 360 one handed dunk and, and walk off, you know, give him the, throw up the deuces <laughs> and call it a day. But 21 9, ugh, Bears, I hate you. You, you, you cost me a, a nice little 16 parlay. But um, what do the Bears do? Trubisky wasn't abysmal, even though he didn't play good in this game down the stretch. Nick Foles is not the answer, and they clearly – he was back and healthy enough and wasn't given the starting job back from when he got hurt midseason. So they don't like either of those quarterbacks, and nor should they. Neither of them are long-term solutions for these Bears. So they can – Mitch Trubisky can walk away. Nick Foles probably profiles as a perfect backup. The Bears are another team that need to be looking at a quarterback. Yeah, haven't you run down the list of options for Washington? I, I mean – Similarly, the Bears need a quarterback. They're, they're, they're not going to have a shortage of options, which I didn't think about until five minutes ago. So you, you, everything we said about Washington bringing somebody in also applies to the Bears. There's no reason. Listen, if we want to go deeper, Andy Dalton's a free agent. He was a one-year deal with the Cowboys, and he wasn't terrible. When, I love Andy Dalton. When he, I, agree, when, I like Andy Dalton. Yeah, I think he's he a starter. Fifth, he, how, what, there's, nah, let's 
Slow down before you say a number. Top half. No. He's top half starting NFL quarterback. Yeah. I'll give you top 24. I'm not, I'm not going to go top no. half. He's he's good. He's, he's good. Six, barely 16th. Nah, well, I'm, I'm in that 16 to 24 range. But listen, you slap him on that Bears team and everything else stays the same. They're a better team than they were this year. Way better. You know, and he, he re-signed Allen Robinson. You had the same weapons that you had before, and you put Andy Dalton there. They're, this is a much more competitive game than they just had. But Allen Robinson is another one who seems all but destined to leave Chicago. Like he deleted all the shit off his off his uh, Twitter, and you know they didn't want to sign him long term before the end of the season. Now he's going to be able to go out and test the waters unless they want to franchise him. That's going to be ugly. The, the Bears could be this close to a full rebuild. Put put Dalton on Washington. How many wins do they get? <clears throat> I think they're uh, next year, or how many would they have won this year? Both. Yeah, I mean, I think they're probably slightly better. Alex Smith did a really good job. An eleven game. win team. I, I think it's they would have been above five hundred. Yeah, nine and seven type thing. Yeah, I think it could have swung two wins for them. Yeah, I, I I'm with you. I like Dalton. I mean, when the when the Cowboys signed him, I was like, man, that's that's some good insurance and. Look, it almost it almost paid dividends for them. So I think he's a guy that teams could be looking at as one of these like Teddy Bridgewater gap quarterbacks where you give him like a two year deal, you still end up drafting someone when it's all said and done. And you know, try and win now. And if it doesn't work out, you switch to the rookie. So Chicago, get that get that red rifle in the windy city. The red rocket or whatever. The red dog penis, whatever it is. <clears throat> um all right. Lips. Now let's talk about the biggest utter disappointment of the whole weekend. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Derrick Henry and oh, Arthur, oh, Arthur, oh, Arthur Smith. Man, you laid an absolute egg, losing twenty to thirteen at home. You were the home, you were the home underdog, and, and, and correctly so, because this wasn't last year. You know, you were trying to you were trying to go back to back and embarrass Ravens. They weren't having it. Lamar Jackson ran rough shot all over this terrible defense and Marcus uh, Hollywood Brown had a hundred yards on you and JK Dobbins scored, but Derrick Henry did not score, you know, because Derrick Henry doesn't score when I want him to. So they lost. Need, need him to. Forget, yeah, forget you know, yeah, exactly. When I, when I need him to. So what do the Titans do? Cause I think the short answer is nothing. They're going to, they're not going to do anything. They, they have what they have and they're going to try and run it back again. They need defense. Their defense stinks. Really bad, and that's interesting because Variable's a defensive guy, and their defense, crap. Yeah. I mean, I know they lost Clowney to injury, but he's a free he agent. Anyway, yeah, he's a free agent. I, he's, I think he's a one-year deal guy. Yes. Um, so they're right back where they started from, but I don't think their offense changes much other than they probably try to re-sign Corey Davis to like a team-friendly yeah. type deal, and then that's the same offense again next year, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean they they re up Derrick Henry. They they have Tannehill. They have AJ Brown. They yeah, have Janu. Nothing, nothing's changing. You now Ferkser's way too involved for this Janu Smith fan's liking, but apparently Janu Smith's an amazing blocker because he just stayed, <laughs> on, stayed on the line all day while Ferkser's running these awesome routes. So who even knows? But yeah, I mean, unfortunately Tennessee. I think the answer is they're just going to hammer their defense this off season and they have, yeah, they have no choice and try to be a run first team again, but. Hey Lamar Jackson, you, I, I I like what I saw. He's he's a little chippy, you know. After getting embarrassed in the first round of the playoffs last year by these same Tennessee Titans, didn't shake their hands afterwards. Good. Oh yeah, he ran right off, didn't he? Yeah, good. Tom Brady can do it. Why can't Lamar Jackson? You know, don't, don't pick and choose when we're allowed to do this stuff. Is the playoffs? They were Tennessee was the team that was like, like. It, 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 when he played during the season, I think the Tennessee players weren't on their half of the field, and it started a fight between Ravens. Stomping on the um, Ravens logo. Yeah, so the, the, Ravens were, did the, the entire – yeah, yeah, damn right they did. The entire defense went and danced on their logo and sat on it <laughs> Shit, after the interception. that I like that. Good. He's, I don't want all these guys to be friends. We talked about this shit before. Let's oh, get some yeah. rivalries back. That's a great one. Kudos to the Ravens. Now the yeah, last game. Play, I don't – I want the playoffs next year. Then again, I can watch this every year. God, God damn right. Just slot them right in. Tell them they don't even have to play. <laughs> yeah, just You two are playing each other. We'll figure the rest of this out. The last and craziest game. I, I can't tell you when I've witnessed a crazier game 
and I turned this off after the first quarter. Oh, so that, that's, that's all I needed to see to say this was the craziest game I've ever seen. 28 Cleveland points in the first quarter. Yeah. Pouncey throws the – snaps the ball into the end zone on the first play. Defensive touchdown. Big Ben throws an interception on the next series. Uh, Jarvis Landry gets a dart that should have been like a five-yard catch. He takes for 40 yards for a touchdown. It's 14 down. Big Ben throws a – or they go three and out. Another touchdown by Kareem Hunt. Interception by Big Ben, I'm pretty sure. Another touchdown by Kareem Hunt. You're just like the, – the floodgates are pouring in yeah. on Pittsburgh. All those rivers – <laughs> came to a head and just submerged the entire Steelers franchise in the matter of a quarter. And I couldn't be happier for Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns that they were able to go into Pittsburgh and beat the, what's, what's the correct word? Not what's, what's, what's the worst way to say they're not as good as their record overrated. That doesn't really seem to land. Like you guys know what I'm talking about. The Steelers were not a 12 and 14. The Steelers were probably a nine and seven team. Or the eleven and zero Steelers yeah. versus the last, you know, five games of the year, six if you count the playoffs, were two completely different teams. <laughs> okay, well, listen, these eleven and zero Steelers started off at Giants versus Broncos versus Texans versus Eagles versus Browns, who weren't the same towns. Out at Titans, at Ravens, you know, until week seven and eight, they really weren't tested. Then they got Cowboys, Bengals, Jaguars. Win, win, win. Then they eked one out against the Ravens, and then their losing streak started against that Washington football team that was surging. Their record at the beginning, I, you know, they could have tried their hardest and probably only lost two of those games, to be honest with you. So schedule makers did did them some favors early. But Big Ben is cooked. He can't throw the ball downfield anymore. They were they showed a stat that 2.17 seconds snap to throw for Big Ben fastest in the NFL. It literally is just like – slant slant like it's a team full of michael thomas's out there like everyone just run a different type of slant big ben's going to pick the one person he wants to throw to that's 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 their offensive plan they were the worst running team in the nfl this year and it's largely because james connor isn't good but they also have a good pass block in o-line it's not a good run block in o-line so changes are coming for pittsburgh in, in this loss like I think Big Ben has a year left on his contract, so if he wants to, you're like the same Phil Rivers corollary. If he wants to come back, he's He'll going be to back. be the guy. Yeah, he doesn't want to go out like that, right? So we're going to get another year of an older Big Ben, no Juju, no Connor, probably zero percent chance. Yeah, so they're going to have to bring in a back because it's not Benny Snell, it's not Anthony McFarland, it's not Jalen Samuels. So could they bring in a Leonard Fournette? I think Leonard Fournette's perfect. For the, the name, team. the other name that I heard floating around, who I think does exactly what Pittsburgh wants, it's Carson. Is, no, uh, yeah. our our friend from yeah. Baltimore, Mister Gus Edwards. How uh-huh. fucking good would he be as a Pittsburgh running back? I just gladly traded a late second round pick for Gus Edwards in a league where I'm light at running back, on the hope that he signs somewhere. And worst case, as a, as an RFA, that he is the one B to Dobbins, and he's still getting ten carries plus a game in Baltimore. So I I was more than happy to do that. He deserved more touches on Sunday as well in that, in that tight game. He was, he was running the ball well. And I think he only got like three or four carries. Do you see Mark Ingram inactive? Finally took you long enough. Like why? But this veteran deference shit, it needs to go away. (laughs) Once he got hurt, they should have been like, it was fun while it lasted, Mark. You know, he, you can be our rah, rah, big trust guy. You can introduce Lamar Jackson in every post game press conference, but you're not suiting up anymore. You're you're by far the third best running back, and you don't play special teams. So, fourth if you count Lamar. Ex- exactly. You you are not getting you're not getting carries. So we're <laughs> we, we don't feel obligated to search anymore. But yeah, I mean Pittsburgh. There's gonna there's always running backs, right? There's gonna be guys that aren't given second contracts. You know, all these names that are gonna be potentially available, and I think they want to get back to their roots. No Juju is gonna put a target on Deontay Johnson's back. Is Chase Claypool? Really as awesome as he seems to be in spurts, you know, as uh, Big Ben gets a year older and you take a juju out of that system. So look for Pittsburgh to target a wide receiver in rounds two or three in this draft again and then proceed to draft that guy accordingly higher than anyone else would because odds are he's he's going to be a quality wide receiver <laughs> in the NFL because that's just what they do. So I don't know what to do with Pittsburgh. 
You know, the thing with Pittsburgh just breaks my heart as we talk about it. It's the, the only guy they've drafted. In the, and I know that they are just a wide receiver factory. The only guy that I pounded and drafted heavily was fucking Marcus Wheaton. How did I get the one guy <laughs> who they couldn't develop? Yeah, uh, him and Lima Swede, you know. They're, 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 there's, not, there's not a lot of swings and misses with that organization. I, Listen, Marcus Wheaton had a, a few like, uh-oh. Oh yeah, <laughs> and now and then he just just evaporated. I forget where he went after Pittsburgh, but it was short lived, and then he's gone. But listen, we're talking about fifty percent of the AFC North is still in the playoffs. The Cleveland Browns would beat him, and the Baltimore Ravens. You know, Ball- Cleveland's facing against Kansas City. That should be an interesting game, but they're a ten point dog in Arrowhead. So you want to believe that comes to an end? Well, the Baltimore Ravens are going to be in a slugfest against Buffalo. That's going to be a great game. It's better game. The best game. The, the night games are the best game of, of each night. Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit more. But there's a chance that one of those teams advances further. So Pittsburgh won the division and I think is the third best team in their division. And, you know, I have an unhealthy obsession with the Cincinnati Bengals and the belief that they are going to get better with Barrow coming back and if they can get their shit together with drafting and get some a better offensive line in front of them. Pittsburgh is, is not far away from being the worst team in the AFC North. I, you've said nothing. I disagree with. Yeah. So, but they were also, you know what I mean? There are a few pieces of what they're, I would I know. Listen, I know they got hurt. Their defense is super good. That, that, that plays in the NFL. Once they get those guys back, if they get their guys back, but Dupree was a uh, franchise tag guy. And so who knows if they re-sign him and then uh, Devin Bush, he'll be back, you know, rookie. So they have a ton of talent. I'm, I'm not going to begrudge that defense. I am just not impressed with that offense whatsoever. I mean, just, and big Ben is now becoming an anchor to that offense. I, yeah, yeah, you're not saying anything I can like outwardly disagree with. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. there's there's a case to be made that you know moving a few pieces on offense, a little better running back, takes some of the pressure off Ben, and you know, d- despite being older, coming off that elbow injury, for the most part, he still looked like typical Big Ben. I mean, it was all garbage time. They're down twenty early, but. I think he's only the second guy ever to throw for 500 yards in the playoffs. So if they need to rely on him, they can. He also threw the four fucking picks, which is as no good. But John, he threw it 68 times. Yeah. Go for it. I mean, 47 completions. That was more completions than there were attempts in the Rams Seahawks game. I'm pretty sure. By one, by one quarterback, (laughs) more completions than quarterback attempts. In the game. I mean, you don't want Big Ben throwing it 68 times. You don't want him throwing for 500 yards. You know, surprisingly, he took zero sacks, and that was because he was willing to throw interceptions instead of being sacked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just the whatever. interception, yeah, the one he threw over Benny Snell's head, you take the sack. He, he, he's always trying to – listen, he, he's got a little Carson Wentz to him. I mean, Carson Wentz gets <laughs> comped to Big Ben all the time, not wanting to take that sack, so you're a little reckless with the ball. Like, his, his interceptions probably were credited to pressures, so – All right, enough of the negativity, but there's a lot to go around because some of these teams didn't seem like they deserved to be in the playoffs when when their number got called last weekend. But now we are to the Elite Eight, and you wanted to talk about a round two fantasy football. So I'm going to let you take the lead back on this because I only participated in one playoff league, and it is a set-it-and-forget-it league, but I obviously do have an opinion of some of these games. So by all means, sir. Take it away. Yeah, so just kind of jumping into it, I mentioned the one league I'm in that's 200-ish teams, and I have ownership numbers. Uh, obviously, each league you're in is going to be a little different, but I, I think it's going to be close to what we saw. So for a lot of these one-and-done leagues, it looked like Lamar Jackson was the most owned guy. They're advancing, so he's not available for most teams. The second highest owned was uh, Josh Allen. So already you have no piece of that Baltimore Buffalo game at quarterback, and it is the third highest projected score with a total of 50 this week. So pivoting off of them in week one gives you a, a, a lot more. Your, your lineups are going to look a lot different, I think, than a lot of teams in the second round of the playoffs. For running back, uh, Henry and Taylor were the most owned, not surprising at all. They're both out, so pretty much everyone's going to have a pretty similar-looking 
running back room this week in a lot of these leagues. I, I don't know where people go. I mean, the, the top names, you've got Chubb, Kamara, Dobbins, Akers, and Ronald Jones slash Fournette. And then obviously coming off the bye, you've got Aaron Jones and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. If he's healthy or Bell, if they want to get him involved, if Edwards-Hilaire isn't healthy. This is – Oof. So running back's kind of a tough one this week because I don't know where you're going to pivot. I think people jump all over Kamara, even though they're probably – they may not. I mean, there's a strong chance Tampa beats him, so this might be your last chance to use Kamara. Um, wide receiver, the way this league had set up, Antonio Brown and A.J. Brown were mixed together. The, the thing could not uh, <laughs> separate the A. the A. Browns. So I don't know what who had what ownership, but moving down from there, Diggs was the most owned guy. Then Robinson, he's out. Deontay Johnson, who is now out as well. Godwin, Lockett, who's out. Marcus Brown, Michael Thomas was very lightly owned coming off that injury, so I think he's going to shoot up the board. And again, you got Tyreek Hill coming in, Devontae Adams. Um, and then at tight end, Mark Andrews was the most owned, so – if you could get Mark Andrews in this week against uh, Buffalo, a lot of teams had already used him. So you might get a little different looking lineup with that. And obviously Kelsey's coming in and Tanya um, scrolling down the list here. Not much exciting here. Gronkowski, Jared Cook, Austin Hooper who did get in the end zone, Tyler Higby, Dawson Knox. So nobody really used those guys. So I'm suspecting it's going to be a heavy Kelsey weekend just based on the names you have available. Yeah, see, and obviously the play was Big Ben was the quarterback to play last week So because you could eat those four interceptions with 500 yards and four touchdowns. Um, yeah. I, I think the, the Jonathan Taylor, Derrick Henry, you know, pr- primary plays were, were pretty obvious um, at the end of the day. <clears throat> because a lot of people suspected the one in the Colts to lose. So you got to get Taylor in there and then you don't want to miss out on the Derrick Henry. So, <laughs> although you, you would have, you would have done better by missing out on it with just about yeah. anyone else. But you know, at last here we are. The first name that jumped out at me wasn't the first name you mentioned with running backs and it's going with uh, Cam Akers going into green Bay, green Bay, still bad run defense. Perfect. Rams are going to, be focused on the run and playing good defense. It'd be interesting to see what Aaron Donald's status is. He did come back in the game after his rib injury while he was tackling Russell Wilson, but you're going to need to get after Aaron Rodgers to keep the game close enough to let Akers do his thing. And the second largest line with the Green Bay Packers getting, you know, given seven points and the lowest spread at 46 doesn't lend to a lot of optimism, but it also makes you want to stay away from a lot of that Green Bay offense uh, as well with the low total. So um, Akers would be my guy in that game, like you said, with Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen being picked heavily uh, in the pool that you're referencing, and that's our only point of reference. It does kind of draw away from that Ravens-Bills uh, game, but if not, I mean, who knows who wins that game? You might want to take a shot with whatever quarterback you didn't pick the week prior. If you were a Lamar Jackson guy a week ago, you might want to get on Josh Allen this week because if Buffalo wins, you don't want to miss out on the the Josh Allen aspect of things. Referencing Kelsey at tight end, I'm going to hold off on that. They're a 10-point favorite. I'm, I'm going to try and keep those bullets in my chamber as they're likeliest to advance out of all of these teams. And in, in my opinion, and in Vegas's opinion. So I wouldn't be going too heavy with any KC players this week, if I could potentially avoid it. There's tight lines on the Buffalo uh, Ravens game at two and a half. And then the Tampa Bay New Orleans game at three, I would be heavy on those teams. And I think there's going to be points scored in both. I don't know what the stats are, but, New Orleans is 2-0 against the Tom Brady-led Tampa Bay Buccaneers this year. And I have a I, I have a feeling that the, the third time might be a charm for these Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, Saints didn't really impress me all that much against the Bears, not, albeit they didn't have to. But I don't know. I think the Bucs win this game, honestly, in advance. So I'd be trying to get some Saints. And Kamar scored three touchdowns in two games against the Tampa Bay Bucks this year, albeit with limited yardage. So I would be picking Kamar if I hadn't already. I would be picking Michael Thomas. 
I may even be picking Drew Brees as my quarterback. I was going to say, if you're going from Ara and Thomas, then you have to stack them with Brees. Yeah, yeah. Or if you just want to be conservative, then, then fine, hold off on Thomas. But get Brees in there, maybe even go with a Jared Cook you know, as a tight end because – Again, like I said, I'd be staying away from KC. I'd be staying away from Green Bay. Um, you know, as we said in our episode last week, there are teams we think make it to the Super Bowl. So you're going to have them in all likelihood next week um, to to draw from and, and pick and choose. So I would be looking heavily at the Baltimore Buffalo game and the Tampa Bay New Orleans game as far as players for this week. And keep an eye on what the hell is going on with Ronald Jones because if he doesn't play – then you're getting Leonard Fournette returning to Louisiana for a little home cooking as the LSU product. And while the run defense is stout with those Saints, listen, if, if you know he's the clear-cut starter going in, you could do worse than Leonard Fournette because no one started him last week because nope. no one thought he was going to play any meaningful snaps. So, so he, oh, and a- hold on one more thing. Zach Moss is out. He's done. So they're down to Devin Singletary in their backfield. So while you might not like the Buffalo backfield and you have every reason not to like the Buffalo backfield, it's going to be Devin Singletary and TJ Yeldon. I'm going to assume who I don't even know if he's was active last week because he didn't see any snaps after Moss went down, but might want to take a hard look at Devin Singletary this week too. Yeah. So you, you mentioned not using Kelsey this week. However, would you use, Tyreek Hill. Cleveland has given up the most points in the fantasy playoff. Well, in the over the year, twenty six point three points allowed to wide receivers, uh, which is the best matchup of any position for wide receivers this week. Do you? And look, despite obviously the game script changed a lot of that for, for the matchup with Pittsburgh and Cleveland, the Pittsburgh wide receivers had monster games. Do you get Tyreek Hill in there? And then I, you say, if yeah, you I don't think it. that's, yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea. Um, Cleveland was out some of its uh, Denzel Ward's on the COVID list. Uh, he was another one where they were positive, so I don't know if he would be back in time for next Sunday's game or not. But they, they, they're already kind of weak. Secondary was was even worse. I think both starters were were backups because Kevin Johnson is out as well, and so is Denzel Ward. So they may be a little better, but even them better, they still give up a ton of yards. So that might be the direction to go in um, yeah, of all of them. I'm just very hesitant to burn my Mahomes and my Kelsey because uh-huh. of just the scarcity <laughs> of things. So Tyreek Hill's probably the one, and I'm not touching any other running backs uh, either. So Tyreek Hill would probably be the ticket I would call, or maybe you go with Sammy Watkins if you're really trying to get very contrarian because you obviously can throw on the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, the, the, there's some interesting matchups here, depending on how these game, games go. So let's say you're, yeah. we talked about the, the previous episode kind of sticking with a, a conference throughout these first rounds. You went AFC quarterback, and a lot of people did go Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson. Now that the Bills and Ravens are playing, if you use one, are you pivoting right back to the other? If you use Jackson, you're going Allen. If you use Allen, are you going Jackson? Yeah, and that's what I think I referenced in that game. It's because who knows how that, – that, you, you tell me either of those teams win by 10 points. I'm like, I'm not surprised. You know, So I, I would not want to miss out on being able to capitalize on both of those quarterbacks. And we know points are going to be scored here. I mean, there's a 50-point total. It's not the highest in the slate, but it's not the lowest. I mean, it's it's third, but still north. It's still 50 points. You know, at the end of the day, with a minus two and a half for Buffalo. So what they're projected to score 27 and a half. Um, so 28 points, four touchdowns potentially, and Josh Allen's going to be tied to every one of those touchdowns. He's either yeah, throwing them by, or running them. By by team, Kansas City's first with 33 points projected. Second is New Orleans with 27.5. Third is Green Bay, 26.5. Fourth is Buffalo, 26.25. Fifth is Tampa Bay, 24.5. Sixth is Baltimore, 23.75. Seventh is Cleveland with 23 points. And deservedly so, eighth is the Rams with 19.5. So, you're yeah, so you hope. tell me 28 for Buffalo, 24 for Baltimore. You know, and you saw Lamar Jackson is going to run. I mean, that's just – that's the only way that they're going to win at, at this point. And 
the Baltimore Ravens, or sorry, not the Baltimore Ravens, the Buffalo Bills defense isn't that good. I mean, they have some really good players, but their defense isn't good. And Tredavious White's probably just going to follow Marquise Brown around all day. So hopefully uh, Mark Andrews can do his thing against the middle of the second, the middle of the defense, although Matt Milano is back and healthy. So I think a 100-yard rushing day for Lamar Jackson is entirely likely again this week. So if you went with Allen, yeah, I'm probably looking at Lamar Jackson. You went Lamar Jackson, I'm probably looking at Josh Allen because I don't want to lose one of those two in this matchup. Yeah. What do you think of Antonio Brown? who's gotten in the end zone quite a bit lately as the season has progressed. And the the Saints, I'm assuming, are going to try to take away Mike Evans because that seems to be what they do when Evans gets a man's fight with Lattimore at some point during every game. So <laughs> they go back to Brown on the outside. You think Godwin has another – who got peppered? Oh, I had him in all my leagues. It's where they're there. And that guy, I did fucking nothing with him. Who, Godwin? Yeah. Got me. Five for 79 and a touchdown. Yeah, yeah but then he, he had double digit targets. Like, he did. He, he, had 12, he had 12 targets and he had a few drops, which were very uncharacteristic, but there was a few times that Brady didn't put the ball in the right place. Yes, I'm a guy when apologist. But Antonio Brown had three targets on the game. His touchdown was busted coverage, the 36 yarder that he scored early in the game. Three targets, John. 12 to Godwin, 10 to Mike Evans. Antonio Brown is a distant third again in that pecking order with a healthy Chris Godwin. Tom Brady said, quote, Chris Godwin has the best hands of any receiver he's ever played with. Oh, God. And end quote. So, good. Keep him healthy. He's going to get those targets again. Mike Evans, Lattimore or not, he, he, he did, you know, six for 119 on 10 targets after hyperextending his knee. I thought he was done. When, when he heard his name yeah. in, in week 17, I thought I was like, oh, he's done. Like fire up your Antonio Brown in the playoffs, but no, he was healthy enough to put up 20 yards of catch uh, in a, in a tough game last week. So I wouldn't be trying to go down to Antonio Brown. He'd be a bullet I'd keep in the event that Tampa wins again. And then they're getting a shootout likely against green Bay. Then I may be inclined to, to pull the trigger on that, to hold on to some green Bay stock. Um, for the Super Bowl, so um, that that's that's where I'm at. I, I'm not trusting Antonio Brown if I don't have to. Um, as you, as you bring up Green Bay here. I don't much like you said with the Chiefs, kind of saving Kelsey and Mahomes if you can. I'm not this. I think this is a shitty matchup. I think this is a low scoring game, which is reflected in the total. It's the lowest one of the weekend. I think I'm saving Green Bay for the championship or the Super Bowl. I don't I don't like any Green Bay players this week in particular. I mean the Rams defense is solid. They're they're among they're the worst, I think, points to quarterback of all the teams remaining. Mm. Running backs are among the worst. Wide receiver, they're the worst. So Tanyan's the only guy I might like because they're middle of the pack as far as tight end points allowed. But otherwise, I, I'd rather save my Green Bay players for a shootout against Tampa or New Orleans. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I don't disagree. So that's then, then get you some Mike Evans. Cause you definitely didn't start him last week. Go start your saints players as well. Get Michael Thomas involved. So I'm, I'm right there with you. And if I'm, if I'm just repeating anything that you said, there's, there's a reason for this, John. And it's cause I wasn't listening to you and no disrespect, sir, but I just got an update on my phone that the Eagles had fired. Doug Peterson. Did they? Good. Is Good. it his fault? Should they fire yes. Roseman? Well, yes, he should go too. But Harry Roseman is just Jeffrey Laurie's lap dog. And uh, Laurie has gone on record countless times of saying, like, he emphasizes trust, like, above everything else. And, like, there's no one he trusts more than Harry Roseman. So Harry Roseman just has, you know, the, the magic eyes for Laurie that he can do no wrong. And he's been above reproach. He, he scapegoated the Chip Kelly thing when he got demoted. And he, you know, seems to be avoiding, you know, reproach here as well. But Doug Peterson is a problem, in my opinion. And he had to go because, one, that's the only way you can save Carson Wentz. And I believe that's the right decision for this team. And there's clearly some disconnect between him and Carson Wentz the entire time here. And it only devolved across this year where he kind of became the scapegoat. So while I thank Doug Peterson for getting me a Super Bowl during my adult lifetime and let me see a parade in <laughs> Philadelphia, 
I agree with this decision. Now I just can't wait to see who they bring in here because there are so many jobs available in the NFL this year. I mean, I think it's seven now with the Eagles and you can't think any other playoff team are going to, but seven out of 32 available jobs. And all I keep thinking now is get Eric B enemy to Philadelphia. We already have the pipeline. Doug Peterson was an Andy Reid via KC move. Like, let's get <laughs> Andy say good things about Philadelphia in your time here to Eric Bieniemy. Let him bring in here and modernize this offense and actually start leveraging the speed that we have. Oh, hey, got rid of Schwartz. We got rid of Peterson. We, we, we wiped the closet of these old schooly coaches that just don't they don't light my fire anymore, John. They don't make me tighten the pants. You know, I want to. I want a man that's going to make me tighten the pants at the end of the day. So, let's get creative. Yes, sir. So I apologize for that tangent. No. Uh, yeah, but but I, I'm a happy man these days. It's my my Super Bowl just happened at two eleven p.m. Eastern time, and it's that the Jeffrey Lurie. They had a they had a conversation a week ago Tuesday, and then they said they were having a follow up one. And I think the takeaway was. There was going to be some like hard and fast, like you're going to do this. You're going to do it this way. You're going to do this. There's been a ton of conflict. They took a lot of power away from Doug Peterson last year, forcing the fire certain guys. They brought in other offensive assistants and stuff. And I think they were going to try and make him turn over play calling duty. And he wasn't willing to do that. So I could have him. Believe- he probably, you know, he, he, he held firm, but also kudos to, to Jeffrey Glory for making the right decision. This is, uh, I believe – the fastest firing after a Super Bowl win in history. I believe no one has been fired within six years of winning a Super Bowl. People have resigned, but nobody has been fired. You see, and my quick tangent, I promise it'll be quick, is I don't credit him for the Super Bowl. I, I don't. I know he was the head coach of the Eagles for the Super Bowl. It was, I, I've said it, and I will continue to say it, it was Frank Reich was the reason that we won the Super Bowl, not Doug Peterson. And Frank Reich goes and gets the head coaching job in Indy, and you see what the Indianapolis Colts have done. I think he was the mastermind behind all that. And when he left, that's when Doug Peterson took over the play calling responsibility. It literally has been a downward spiral since we won the Super Bowl, and that has coincided with Doug Peterson taking on more and more responsibility for the offense. So I'm glad that they didn't wait six years. If that's what you're telling me, a Super Bowl win gets you in a city because it shouldn't get you that long. This is, it's like any other job in America. It's what have you done for me lately? And this team has gone in the wrong direction. And Doug Pierce made a, a lot of bad decisions this year that put the spotlight to put the target right on his back. So. Oh, heartbreaker. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, real be fine. well for him. Yeah, go catch up with your boy Brett Favre, Doug. Yeah, he could dry his eyes with all his monies. Yeah, Scrooge McDuck style. But yeah, going going back to just kind of recapping what we mentioned here. Yeah, if you if you went with Brady or Breeze in in round one, one of the NFC quarterbacks, I I think. Well, if you went Brady, I think Breeze is the way to go this week, and and then vice versa. If you went Breeze, I think you go Brady, especially just based on the total of 52, and it would be only a field goal difference. So there should be points to be had. I do think Akers has one of the better matchups, uh, despite the low score, just matchup-wise, what they've allowed to running backs. Akers is probably one of the top running back options here. And same thing with Kamara. We both think Tampa wins, so this is your last chance to use them, get them in there. Similarly, if you're going with Breeze and Kamara, you might as well get Michael Thomas in there. If, you know, last chance to use him, he looked healthy a week to knock the rust off. He didn't get a ton of targets, but this week could be different. I I wouldn't be shocked to see him get well into the double digit target wise. We talk about saving Kansas City players, but Hill's got a good matchup. And really, if you already used, you know, some of the higher owned guys, Diggs and Godwin, there's really just based off the, the one league I'm in where I have ownership percentages, there's not a lot of guys. Robinson's out. Deontay Johnson's out. Unless, unless you're going with uh, Devontae Adams, who already mentioned the low score in that game, there's not a lot of good options. 
I mean, Savin Hill is is smart, but he's not going to have a better matchup probably the rest of the way through the playoffs. So this is a good spot to get those points and keep those points, for, you know, get your rankings up there and then figure it out later as long as you got a good lead. And tight end, I don't know how you don't go with Mark Andrews here. Buffalo gave up 9.1 fantasy points to opposing tight ends, which is one of the tops uh, remaining. Cleveland's a little higher. Kansas City's a hair higher. But, again, Cleveland has too many guys in the, the tight end room, so you can't trust any of them to go against Kansas City. And, and I think Andrews is the way to go. If you had gone AFC in round one, as we mentioned, a lot of people went Jackson or Allen. I think you just pivot and stack off that. If you went Allen, you probably went Diggs. So they're not available to you. But the guys that went Jackson, you're probably going to do the Allen Diggs stack because why not? If you go with Lamar, though, you can stack him with Andrews. I think you still run out Thomas and Hill. And then might as well get Dobbins in there because Buffalo was not amazing against running backs. They allowed 19.2 to fantasy running backs. So Dobbins has kind of taken over here, even though Gus gets his touches. Dobbins should be the highest scoring guy out of that group. And if you didn't use Chubb, I think Hunt is in play here. A little revenge game narrative. Kansas City isn't amazing against running backs. They allowed 19.8 themselves. And although Chubb looked amazing, Hunt was the one who was getting those early touchdowns, and he was the red zone guy this week. So I I think there's plenty of good options this week where initially when you just look at it on the surface, I think you kind of scratch your head a bit. But as you break this down, quite a few guys jump off that I think are going to be lower owned than we hope. Yeah, very well said. I'll push back on you on the tight end and and not – going Hooper because there's too many tight ends in in Cleveland. Hooper had 11 targets in this Pittsburgh game, and Joku yeah. had one, and Harrison Bryant had zero. Uh, when it comes to the playoffs, it gets it gets narrower, and I'm going to trust the veterans there. I think Hooper is very much in play uh, in what should be a shootout. Jarvis Landry is another one who I don't think probably many people started um, against the Steelers, and he should probably be one that you should have eyes on as far as receivers are concerned because you're going to lose – Sorry, Cleveland. You're going to lose those Cleveland Browns after this week. Everything else you said, I agree with. Um, you know, we're doing trying to hold off on on Green Bay. We want to burn that Cam Akers ticket because we don't believe that the Rams are going to win. So, you you want to have Green Bay at least in the you know prelude in to the to the Super Bowl in the in the conference finals against whoever they play. Everyone else, I, I I'm right there with you. It's if you used. Brady, use Breeze. If you use Breeze, use Brady because both of them look good. Um, I, I think they're going to have to throw in this matchup um, regardless of who advances, and you want to hold that Aaron Rodgers at least. you know. So that's one where you, 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 pick, the, you pick the poison much like you would with Baltimore and Buffalo if you didn't use Josh Allen or, or Jackson and vice versa because you feel like you're going to have that Mahomes ticket to burn. So if things go off accordingly, you'll be able to pick between Mahomes and, Green, and Aaron Rodgers um and hopefully have the the one left for the Super Bowl you know should it come so um I'm with you all around uh, Tyreek Hill makes a ton of sense because you don't want to avoid the KC offense you, you want to get those points um at the end of the day but again I would very much be staying away from Kelsey because I do think there are other options uh there and mostly it's it's Hooper if not get a piece of that Tampa Bay New Orleans game if you didn't start Gronk or Cook I think they're extremely viable options in the second highest total. Yeah, well, that that should do it for us. Good luck to those of you in these uh, fantasy playoff leagues. Um, I actually, the last few years, granted, I've done well in them, so it helps make it more fun. But yeah, having these 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 small player pools, I've done well in them. But I think, like we said, this is a lot of fun because, especially if you pay attention all year. You know what I mean? If you if you don't play in a bunch of leagues like we do, and I'm sure several listeners do, you already kind of have an idea of what's going on here. And then you mix in, you know, kind of a DFS strategy here where you kind of have to stack each round and find a wide receiver and a guy you like. And then using the strategy, too, who you think is going to win, who, how many games you're going to get. on. we mentioned last week, targeting players that you think will have good games and losing efforts is kind of one of the keys here. So it, it this is becoming one of my favorite parts of the football season and fantasy. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, you know, because there's a lot of strategy involved in it. So you're not just picking the best players. It's not just like a true DFS lineup. You, they're, they're, 
we're, we're talking strategy here. Why are we not picking all the Kansas City Chiefs players when they're exactly. a 10 point home favorite with the highest implied total? You know, well, that's why, because they're most likely to advance and you don't want to have to start Jimmy Garoppolo in your Super Bowl. That's the main takeaway of all of this. You never want to start Jimmy Garoppolo in your Super Bowl. That's how you lose these playoff pools. That's funny. And, and, and here we are, Jimmy Garoppolo season. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. That should do it. Thanks for checking us out. Like, share, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Wherever you find podcasts on Twitter, etc. For myself, John Debari, for my co-host, Mr. Matt Walker, we are the Fantasy 40, and we are out of here. Ow! Doug P. Huh? Peterson. Go on. See ya. There's the door. GTFO. What is that noise? It's the coffee. Why are you fucking it up? Talk about getting gems. What what are you doing? (laughs) Exactly. Do you need help? No. You sure? Because we didn't start yet. I can help you real quick. Do you need to get something out of the kitchen? Do you need to get anything out of the kitchen? Just so we're clear, I don't hear a thing. Really? (laughs) It's probably no worse than when my kids are running around in the background screaming that I can't edit out of the show, so... I'm going to have to focus on any of that, so yeah, let's get into it. Ready? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I always feel, even if I don't have something in my fucking throat, I always feel like (laughs) doing it first. Okay, radio gold. Here we go.